right? So everywhere you go, you, you get to see, uh, everywhere you go on the internet, you get to see banners. And um, there are a couple of interesting things about banners. They come from different places. Um, so you'll see, <laughs> over here I've identified a couple of different banners on a, on a startup website. Um, the one on the top is uh, a banner that we uh, pay people based on a cost per acquisition. So we give a percentage of our revenues, which doesn't cost anything. Um, if we bought the Google ad banners over here, that would be bought on a cost per click or a cost per impression basis. And um, they're really interesting because there's so many ways to do this. Just to get started, I want to talk about the, the, the environment, where things are going. Um, and if you look at it, things are going towards video, rich media, and um, well, text ads are kind of happening because people just spend more money. Um, video and rich media, uh, these things I know from experience because I spent millions of dollars on this stuff, don't actually deliver sales. They help you build your brand, they get engagement. Um, and that's really what this play is about. It's helping you get engagement and building your brand. And anybody who tells you that they're going to do a bunch of display stuff um, based around uh, sales-driven metrics are probably wasting their time because you won't be able to spend any money because you won't be able to justify the ROI. That doesn't mean you shouldn't do it, though, because <clears throat> it's about building a funnel. And... Uh, we know it from all the analytics data and all the other data that, that people measure that people that see your ads and see your brand are more likely to click on your search ads, which ultimately get the last click and ultimately get the credit for all the sales. But that's not, the, it's not really the whole story. And that's why you see videos and rich media. And what I mean by rich media is you can actually put games into ads and, and they take up the whole page and all kinds of interesting things. But the numbers are big and this is just American market. It's pretty indicative of the rest of the world too. Um, when we talk about buying media, we can buy this media all over the place. So when I worked at Asia Rooms, I used to spend $15 million a year on buying advertising and a lot of the ads were bought through Google. A lot of the other ads were bought directly from the media owners. They'd phone me up and we'd have a conversation. We'd negotiate a deal. Um, the reason we did that was because... It's still working. The reason we did that was because uh, you can't block out a website's banners if you don't speak to them directly. And there are just some sites that you just want to block out. Um, maybe for us, maybe I worked at a bank, we really wanted to block out specific expat banking website pages. And we didn't want any of our competitors to get onto that page. So we'd have to negotiate that deal. And that would be a direct negotiation. It would be a phone call or an email. And that's the same story for these guys. Depending on what you do, you may want to specifically take out ads on very niche websites that meet your criteria. But there are also other things called networks, ad networks. And ad networks basically run across all these different environments, and people are looking to basically monetize their impressions at a higher rate. In that regard, we're really talking about Google, or we're talking about Yahoo, or we're talking about um, Tribal Fusion, which is one of our sponsors. And one of the sponsors that we use to buy a lot of our ads. So <clears throat> what are the pros and cons around banner advertising? Because Remember before we talked about text advertising, banners, video, et cetera. Um, really the pros on this is that you can actually put your brand into the ad. Your brand is very much trademarkable kind of thing. You, you, you have something very specific to it which other people cannot copy or they shouldn't be able to copy, otherwise you sue them. And you can't get that across in a text ad, but you can get it across in a banner ad. In addition to that, you can put other really cool images that you may be associated with your brand. So for instance, when you were in the UK, when I was in the UK, we used to, uh, I used to see ads from a, an insurance company, Churchill Insurance, and they always used to have the British Bulldog right next to the ad. You just wouldn't be able to put that British Bulldog into a text ad, which never worked. 
The other cool thing is you can put different types of calls to action. It can just be images, like click here, an interesting image around that, which you can't, again, have in a text ad, which is really what's the limitation around search. The cons are really is that, that you can, if you don't know what you're doing, you can end up buying a lot of impressions and wasting a lot of money very quickly. It, it's so easy to waste money on this stuff, and, uh, and that's why I'm here to kind of teach you a little few of the tricks. Um, so we talk about search, and we talk about you know, display, but when I show you these text ads, these text ads can be used in display. Um, when I worked at Asia Rooms, I used to have two counts of types of campaigns. I would have a text ad campaign, which I didn't allow the cost per click to go above five cents a click, and I'd maybe bring it down to one cent a click sometimes. And then I would have banner ads, which I could push all the way to a dollar or more, because I really wanted those type of impressions. But these are the text ads, and they come with search. And this is just Google's way of monetizing your search even more. There was a day when because Google was managing my account, or helping me manage my account, Google allowed uh, text ad to go onto a high CPC. We literally burned through seven or eight thousand dollars in one morning. I called them up and I said, "Don't do that again. Give me the money back." And they did. It's really easy to burn through money on text ads. I want to show you this because these are, are different sizes of banners. And, uh, and later on, I'll talk about different sizes of banners and different types of impressions that you may get. But basically, if you look at this, where do banners normally sit? They sit on the left-hand side or the right-hand side of the page. Usually on the right-hand side, these are generally dead areas. People do not look at these banners, usually. So for you to stand out on the page, you have to do something interesting. I personally don't find these very interesting, but you'll see something here. You see this whole banner here, and then right at the bottom, it's got start now for free, 30-day trial. It's the orange part. See, it's orange. There's a reason it's orange, because it stands out on the page. That's where, you want, that's where they really want you to look. The cool images, I mean, this is a lot of stuff comes from America because they have more money than everyone else to blow on banners and text and, and all these kind of cool images. But if you look at these images here, is there one that stands out to you? Which one is that? Anybody? Coke, right? Coke stands out. Why? It's simple. There's a reason it's simple. It's because that makes sense. What people often do in banner advertising is it gets too complicated. You can't read this font. Can you read that font? Oh, I can't read that font. Can you read? Oh, you can read that font, but you can't read that font. The thing about it is that you've got to understand your banner is sitting on a little piece of the page, and if your font is too small, they won't be able to read it. So sometimes just keeping a simple image actually has the biggest impact. And remember, this is about branding. It's about impact. Cool calls to action. So in your, in your defense of your spending this $10,000 or $5,000 or $2,000 or whatever the number is, you're going to need to have some sort of metric. And that metric is probably going to come around clicks and, 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 and actions and not impressions because impressions are a really bad uh, way of measuring things. So we have all these different types of examples of different ways to get actions. Do you see there's something in common with all of them? They want you to do something. And they're basically very heavy uh, in, in that approach. And you can read all of them, pretty much. Um, in some of them, you may see that there are no actual text in them at all. This, these, these, these kind of uh, ones with no actual actions could be used in mobile, for instance, which just too small to fit in that little piece of ad, because it's just too tight and you can't read the text anyway. 
this point here around, uh, that I really want to raise here, is that anyone that tells you that they have the ideal banner set is lying. Or they're not doing it well enough. And the reason is because if you surf the internet or any device, different websites, they have different background colors. And one of the things that I always tell my, my people when we're doing creatives is they've got to give me three or four different color sets to run. And the reason we do that is because most web pages are white, but some web pages are blue or black. If you've got a black web page and you've got a black background, it won't stick out on the page. All that happens is that your banner will disappear into the background. If you have a white, back, white background on your banner and you have a black back, background, it'll stand out on the page. Now, how do you tell when you're running stuff around Google on an ad network or whatever? You don't, but they figure it out for you. They try all the different banners and then they see which ones get the highest click through rate and those are the ones they put out. And if you don't have these different color sets, you don't know. You have no chance of actually figuring that out and allowing them to figure it out. So if your company says, my ads are all yellow and black, say, great, you're yellow and black, two different types of contrasts. Can we try something with white? Can we try something with any other color? And then there's only one rule, which is always put the contrasting color against the background in your ad to get the the text or, or visual cue to stand out on the page. So we talked about all those different networks in the beginning. I'm going to talk to you about Google Ads Display because that's the, that's the network I know best. Um, it's also the network that covers most of the internet traffic. Most of the websites you go to these days have got some sort of Google AdSense running on them right now. And the best example I have of this was um, I was chatting to a company, uh, a big social network, uh, not, not, not Facebook, uh, and they came to me and said, we'd like to do a special package with you. And we'd like to buy, you'd like to give you a special package and we'll do it at a $1 CPM or uh, whatever it is. And I said to them, oh, great, I run on your ads already. I run on your, your, your network already. And they said, oh, that's wonderful. And I said, yeah, yeah, no, it's great. Uh, I buy it at one cent a click. And they said, oh, I don't believe you. Took a screenshot, I sent it to them. They weren't exactly happy about it. But what I'm telling you is that most websites run Google AdSense at some point. And you can get most of your traffic you want out of that. There are two parts to this. Google is a beast. So it's got mobile, it's got internet, it's got retargeting. And you need to really, if you want to do this properly, you need to spend some time on it. I suggest you start out with, with internet because mobile is freaking crazy scary. Unless you're doing mobile app specific stuff, it's just really hard to basically get a lot of, you can get a lot of clicks, a lot of impressions. And if your website is not specifically targeted to mobile, it'll just go down the drain. So to elaborate on that a little bit more, uh, for me, and I've been doing Google for the last nine years, uh, it's self-service. I never have to ask anybody to help me change anything. I can get into it really quickly. I've got download applications that I can use. I can draw reports. I can do all kinds of really cool things. I can link it up with analytics all kinds of really nifty stuff. But more importantly, if I want search, I can get search there. If I want display, I can get display there. If I want mobile, I can get mobile there. Pretty much everything. And it gives me scale. And finally, it allows me to do retargeting. And this is how retargeting works. Retargeting basically says, you see an ad on a network. You click on the ad. You come to their website. You leave the website, but you haven't made the transaction. The, the network says, oh, that's you again. You didn't make the transaction, but you went to the website, and it'll basically send you more ads because they know that you're interested now. All right. Also, retargeting can work where you just basically put a pixel on your page and say, I'd like to retarget any users that come to this page and haven't made a transaction. And then basically it says, you're, you, you are now going to be picked up by the ad network. So if you travel the internet, 
or you surf the internet, you'll see that if you go to some certain web pages, and you didn't make a transaction, all of a sudden you'll have four or five impressions of the same company coming up over and over again. You must think, these guys must have tons of money because they find me everywhere. Actually, they just know that you're interested in their stuff and you didn't make a transaction, they want to get you back. And there are much higher conversion rates for retargeting because they know that you're interested than if they were just randomly selecting a group of people. So the, the magic question, how do I get cheap clicks? Because everyone tells me about getting you know, expensive clicks because that's what they want to sell. How do I get cheap ones? And I can tell you that I get clicks when I do this stuff, I can get clicks for a cent, five cents, whatever I want. It just depends on the volume that I want to go after. But I can get a lot of volume because I do it all right. I get lots of different colors, and I'll show you about getting lots of other things. But there are a few good tricks here. And basically the trick here is to get high click-through rates. It's really that simple. You want people to see your ad and click on it. Now, it's easy to get people to click on it if you're offering free you know, sex. But quite frankly, you can't offer free sex to everybody. So what do you offer now to get them to click on? Because you don't want them to click on free money when you're not giving out free money. You have to find that one thing that basically gets them interested in your product. And that's really compelling calls to action. Eye-catching graphics. Different color contrast, so it stands out on the page. Make sure you've got all the banner sizes, and I'll go into some banner sizes that I use now. And finding the correct audience. It's not really complicated, but doing it all right, and it's like baking that cake, doing it all, putting all the right ingredients in, and if you miss an ingredient, it can be a complete catastrophe. But if you do all the right ingredients, you, just, you stick to the, the, the recipe, it'll work. The other part that people, when I speak to people about this, they say, how much should I pay? How much should I pay to buy clicks? And this is a normal kind of distribution for me over the years that I've seen. Um, and the reason is because what happens is that in the initial early stages of setting up your campaign, what happens is that Google says, well, your click-through rate is going to be like everybody else's click-through rate. They're going to use your average click-through rate across all campaigns. They're going to say, if you've got an average click-through rate, then you should pay $2.50 or $3 to get an impression on this page. And it's up to you to prove to Google that your click-through rates are much higher than everyone else's click-through rates before they allow you to stay on that page and continue to advertise and basically get the impressions that you want at a reasonable price. I also used to know, for instance, when I worked in the when I worked in the um, out of the travel industry, I used to know that to buy a click at about ten cents a click was going to be profitable for me over the long haul, pretty much, unless it was really terrible traffic. But if it was a reasonable traffic, it wasn't spammy traffic. Ten cents would basically make it a, a viable option. So the one time I, I basically said to Google, I said to Yahoo, I said, you can have a $20,000 budget at 10 cents a click, I don't care, just as long as they come out of Singapore. They couldn't sell me all the clicks because I didn't have good enough ad copy. I didn't do all the right things. But as long as you get to a number that basically makes your business relatively profitable, then it's okay. Uh, how to measure your budgets. So, like the Facebook guy said really early on, you can spend $5 a day. It's pretty easy. You just take $5 and say, I'm going to spend $5 a day, and you get two clicks, and you're finished. Um, I spend, if I get started on a Google campaign, I'll spend a couple hundred dollars a day as a budget set. But what I'll do is I'll put the budget, I'll put the, the cost per click up at $2.50, or $3, to get the initial impressions, and I'll watch that for hours, like every hour, I'll watch it until it gets the click-throughs, and then I'll bring down the cost per click. And I basically manage those. I'll just nanny it until it gets down to a price where I don't have to look at it every day. But what you can do eventually is you can get your budgets up to $250,000 a day. I know this because that's the maximum they'll let you set it up, because I did it myself. And the reason you want to go up to like $250,000 a day is because you've got the cost per click down to a point where 
you you know that this is these clicks are going to be profitable clicks if you can get them at one cent, two cents a click, or whatever the number is. So you don't care if it's they spend all the money because they're never going to spend all the money. It's just there's no there's not enough traffic out there at one cent a click. So if you can get your metrics right, you can go to two hundred fifty thousand dollars a day, and I've done that. So I know it works. Um, this was Help Learn's banner set, and I basically got some stats off it. I didn't do this campaign, but I got some stats off it, and they followed my metrics that I gave them. Uh, the really interesting thing about these metrics is that this was the, worst, the best banner, and this is the worst banner. <laughs> look how tight they were in terms of they look really the same, aren't they? I mean, like, you look at it, they're the same pieces of text, they're the same design, the same logo, no real call to action. But the funny thing about it is this one got nearly five times more click-throughs than the red one. And that's quite interesting because it shows you how getting colors right is so important in this. These are the sizes of the banners that we use, and these are the impressions that they got. Uh, really interesting, the 728 times 90 got the most. Um, if I go right back to the earlier slide, remember that one I said on the right-hand side? That's a 728 times 90 banner. Gets a lot of impressions. And the reason for that is that that's also the highest, one of the highest, you know, if you're going to sell a banner as a direct sale guy, you're going to try and sell the biggest banner you can sell because you're going to get the most money out of it. So there's a lot of impressions for that. Whereas the smaller ones, there are not that many impressions. But guess what? There are probably not that many people that have got a 200 by 200 type of banner, so you're not competing against anyone else. Okay. So the idea here is to do many, co many colors and many different sizes, as many sizes as you can get your hands on, figure out the right calls to action, and all of a sudden you've got something interesting, you can get your prices down. And then don't be afraid to basically lower bids and increase budgets. Um, this was a little trick taught to me by some WPP guys. So I won't take all the credit for everything I learned. But uh, what they said is, remember we talked about choosing your niche websites and then negotiating those deals directly? Well, you do that, and you basically get people who kind of come to your website you know are relevant traffic. And then what you do is you retarget them with all the networks out there at a really cost, a cheap cost per click. And this is a great way to basically get volume and find the right niche. Uh, I just want to end with some terms and, and maybe give you some stories on this because this is kind of how when you get started and you're fresh, fresh grad or you're, fresh, fresh, you're doing this for the first time, someone will try and sell you a CPM. Um, an average CPM in a very competitive industry, maybe $10 which is basically $10 for 1,000 impressions. And that's basically a cent an impression, which is kind of expensive. Uh, but a normal CPM was going to be somewhere between $1 and, and $3, depending on the market, depending on, on, on a bunch of factors. But geography is really important in this, and Singapore is quite an expensive geography. I suggest you never buy anything on a CPM. Anytime anybody tried to sell me CPMs, I just turned away. And the reason was that I couldn't, I could really screw this up too quickly. Buying impressions is just too easy to get wrong. Um, I can tell you that buying, there were some websites on the internet where I bought clicks at one cent a click and I had to turn it off because it was so bad. The conversions were so terrible. But even at a cent or a rupee, I couldn't make money off them. And guess what? They'll try and do that on based on impressions with you for you, any sales guy will. I suggest the minimum that you buy at is a cost per click. If you can get to cost per lead, and this does exist in Google, they'll offer you a cost per lead, a cost per action type of thing. This is great, but the problem is that Google algorithms aren't that hot right now for that kind of stuff. Maybe they'll improve in the future, but uh, I have seen very poor results from when I've gone from cost per click to cost per lead, because the volumes just drop off. They're terrible. Um, the cost per action really is more of an affiliate type of deal. It's a reseller type of relationship. And um, 
and, and those exist. They're very common in casinos and porn and that kind of stuff. Uh, uh, basically, where all the big money is. And uh, yeah. so, what do you need to do now? You get to get your credit card out and you start spending some money and uh, and learn from your mistakes. Remember, you can start small. You don't have to go huge from the day one. If you have any questions, let me know. Questions for John? Give him a round. Cool.